Welcome to Ableton Live 11. This video is a tour of Ableton Live 11 to get you around navigational wise in the workspace. So the first thing I'm going to show you is command comma. This is the preferences window. You can also get there from the live menu up in the top preferences or command comma. You're going to have to come back here a lot. This will allow you to choose your audio interface. Today I'm using a Scarlett 2i4 USB. You'll be using your PreSonus uh, audio interface that we have at school. But make sure your audio input and audio output devices are set to your audio interface. The other thing you may want to play around with is this look and feel. I find that the display is a little small, so I like to zoom it. Maybe I'll go up to 120, 130% or so. That just makes everything a little bigger and I can see it better. You can also brighten it a little bit. You can go to light, you can go to dark, whatever you want to do. I'll keep it at the default for now. But just know that this preferences window is something that you should access a lot to make these kinds of changes. You're also going to find your launch key keyboard in here under MIDI. So these top three tabs are super important. Anyway, moving on. You will probably see this lessons panel coming up over here on the side, and you can close that for now. We will get back to it in another video, but that does give you a little bit more screen space. Another thing you might want to do is go down to the lower left hand corner and click on this triangle. What that will do is give you this help menu, and anytime you hover the mouse over something, it will tell you what it is and what it does. For example, this is the browser sidebar. Move it over here the browser content pane. Over here, the groove pool. Um, this is the mixer section, and so on. So anytime you want to know what something does, just consult this window in the lower left-hand corner and hover the mouse over whatever object you have a question about. If you want to hide it, you can click the triangle. Now those triangles work for just about everything. If this browser section up here is taking up too much space, you can click the triangle. It will fold. There's another one down here. It's great to have this amount of control over your workspace. Let's head on over to the browser first. You'll notice that in this first section, in the categories section, you have sounds, drums, instruments, all this stuff over here. Uh, I'm going to start with sounds, and I'm going to head over to the content pane. Um, here, you can open this up, and you can see that there's way more sounds in here than we had in BandLab. So just, I'll click on one of them and you'll be able to hear it play. If that's too loud for you, you can head over here to the master uh, cue volume, and that will change the volume of a sound when it plays back. If you don't want to hear it at all when you choose something, you can click the blue headphones, and then it won't play for you at all. I kind of like to hear it, though. Anyhow, I'm going to grab this abdominal bass and I'm just going to drag it on over to my first MIDI track. You could also double click it. It would go the same way. Now don't get real concerned about what's going on down here. Ableton is a much more sophisticated program than BandLab is and you have a lot more control over your sounds. But that's how easy it is to add a sound. I can just now play on my MIDI keyboard and I get my sound. Um, if I change my mind about this I can uh, delete it and I can if I want to add it back I'll just double click that's another way to add that sound back in these are MIDI tracks that is I can play with my MIDI keyboard these other two tracks here are audio tracks we're gonna do a little bit more on audio later what I want you to do for this lesson is start to add a couple of tracks in fact we can get rid of these audio tracks I'm just right clicking and deleting. So I have a bass track. If I wanted to add another track, I could go back into the browser, maybe pick a piano sound, go through here. There's all kinds of different piano sounds. If you just want a plain old grand, a plain old grand piano, it has a search menu. Grand piano, there we go. So I'll grab this and I'll drag it on over. So now I have a bass sound and a piano sound. Let's say I want some drums. I can go in here, sample a couple of drum kits, 
and drag one over. So now I've got bass, piano, and drums all added in. Notice too that one of these tracks is in focus, that is it's a lighter shade of gray than the other two. Uh, it is the track that I last draw, dragged in, and it's armed for recording, which means when I go over to my MIDI keyboard, that's the one that's going to play. That's enough for your first lesson. Make sure you spend some time adding tracks, exploring these sounds, and changing the display to suit your needs. When we come back, we're going to learn how to record and set the metronome.